Welcome back, everyone. We have another stock prediction, and this is in a company called Viva Systems. Now, this stock has really, really come down over the past few months, and especially within this area right here, where in just a three day time frame, it was down over 15%. Let's learn more about this company. And as we learn more about it, we can figure out what's going on here exactly. Why is it going down? And is this possibly something to look at as a potential investment? Viva Systems has built one of the widest moats in the software industry. Think about that, how big the software industry is. And this is one of the widest moats. It's very important, widest moats. That's so important in a business. Given the company's dominance of the mission critical pharmaceutical and R&D software space. The company has years of growth ahead of it. So this is a growth business. This is a large company, but it has years of growth ahead of it. That's what you want to hear. So here's a business that has one of the widest moats. Usually when you think wide moat, you're thinking of a gigantic company. But here you have a company with a, one of the widest moats in the software industry, and yet it has a lot of growth. So that's what you want to hear in a business. What I have been doing with my time is to search for companies that I can both weather the storm and come out with the other side in a stronger position. Viva Systems, I believe I have found such a company and in this article, I will end my reasons for a long position in the company. It's highly likely that many reading this article have never heard of Viva Systems. It is certainly not a household name. However, if you are in the life sciences industry, chances are you either use Viva's products nearly every day right now or will in the very near future. Viva Systems is by far the market leader in cloud-based software. So here's another reason to be excited about this business. It's cloud-based software. This is tech. Tech companies have outperformed a lot of the other sectors in the short and long term. So it's based with tech and here it's also based on the life sciences industry, right? So that's important because it's also healthcare. Healthcare is a very important sector. It's a large chunk of the US GDP. Americans are getting sicker and they're getting older and demand for healthcare will continue. And this is embedded in the healthcare industry, okay? This is CRM, which is also an important industry, similar to Salesforce, which is also a great business. So this is involved in a very good industry and it provides a very important service. Okay, so let's continue. This is truly mission critical stuff that Viva in helping a company navigate clinical trials, pharmaceutical sales, document vaults, and CRM. Viva claims to currently hold an 80% market share in the life science market CRM space, 80%. That is an enormous market share in such a large industry. Think about that. With 19 out of the top 20 pharmaceutical companies using its product. Talk about being embedded in the space. 19 out of the top 20 pharmaceutical companies and 80% market share. So this is something to really be excited about. Okay, let's continue. So let's take a look at this. This is important. Viva is a leading supplier of vertical software solutions serving customers ranging from small emerging biotech companies to global pharmaceutical manufacturers. So it has a broad range of customers. It benefits from switching costs. This is important for the cost, time, productivity, operational risks, et cetera, associated with changing software solutions from one provider to another within the life science industry. Where pharma and biotech companies have strict workflows for clinical trials, R&D, and manufacturing, Morningstar believes switching costs are exacerbated. So if you think about this, let me give you an analogy. It's like Adobe. They make Photoshop. Now think about what's based around Photoshop, there's universities teaching it, there's businesses that use it, students are using it. To go from Photoshop to a competitor, it's just too costly. The learning curve is too great. The other competitors might not offer something as desirable as Photoshop. So it's the switching costs that are too complicated and costly, which is why they're just gonna stick with this company, right? And keep in mind, this is healthcare, this is serious stuff. So what they're providing, it's a wide economic moat. It's embedded in a broad range of different kinds of healthcare sectors. And it's got this wide economic moat. This is what you want in a business. And in addition to that, like I said, you have the growth potential. So why has it gone down? And let's take a look at the balance sheet. 
Wow. This is incredible. Take a look at this balance sheet. I mean, look at the revenue all oh, the way up. This is going back 2012. This is 13 years. Take a look at this all the way up. Look at the net income straight up. And this is something even more amazing. Look at the cash. Look how much cash this company is generating. And look at the debt. You can barely see it. Look at the cash debt ratio. This is remarkable. To find this in a business is extremely rare. This could very well be in the top 1% of all businesses. Let's go further. Take a look at this. Wow. Operating cash flow. Straight up. Free cash flow. Straight up. Net income. Straight up. Cash flow from dividends. I mean, this is such a strong balance sheet. I mean, they didn't even have any debt. Going back around 2019, look, look, zero debt. Incredible. And look how little they have. This is an amazing balance sheet. So why is it going down? And this is what I expected. It's about guidance. I've seen this happen many times where a company goes down because of guidance. So despite all the earnings beats that it has and the revenue and the cash flow, low debt, everything you want in a business, the company lowered its fiscal year 2024 revenue guidance. So basically, I've seen this happen before where a company does really well and lowers its guidance and then the share price takes a hit. Now, you got to understand something. This company, although it's tech, it's involved in the healthcare industry. Healthcare has taken a hit this year. And I mentioned this before, when a sector doesn't do well, even companies that are doing well in the sector will also go down. And I think that's part of what's going on here with this company. Now, let me just say healthcare is a very important sector. So when the healthcare sector does well, this company will do well. It has many, many things going for it. Okay, so let's take a look at where the price is right now. And there may be a good place to possibly take a position. Okay, so if this big parabolic drop, it started to rebound right here. Now, here's something really interesting. If you look back, it kind of is making a very strong level of support, the low 160 level. Look, we made a low here, 160.21. We'll go further back here, all the way back to December 22. Here it's in the high 150. So this is a pretty strong level of support. Did dip below here, if you look here, but still it held above 150 and then it started to rebound really strongly right here. We'll look after this big drop that it had. But this is a pretty strong level of support. Here we go again. Look, all the way back here, May of 22, also in the low 50s. Wow. Look at that level of support. That is really strong. If you look at the weekly chart, as you can see here, the low that it made, you go all the way back the last time around the 150, 160 level, you have to go all the way back to April of 2020. And it keeps hitting this area. So you take a look, came okay. coming back down. Here it is coming back down. It's finding some support, boom. Finding some support, right back up again. Finding support, right back up again. And here we are again, it came back down here. So this is a strong level of support. We're looking at the 150s, 160s. Now, I, wouldn't buy it here. I would wait for it to come down somewhat more. Now, can it go down more from here? Sure, it can. But I think based on the strong level of support that it's making in the 160-ish range, one may consider to take a position in the 160-ish range, that particular range, or possibly even lower if you're more conservative. See if it can retest this. The low is right here of around 162. Now, another way to approach this, if you don't want to wait for it to come down or you think it's going to go up and you're going to miss the opportunity to get in, you can also possibly sell puts in this area. Maybe a little bit longer dated expiration dates, so the puts will have some premium value. And you could look at around the 160, 162 range. And of course, the price right now is not a bad price. It's actually a good price, but I'm conservative. I want to wait for it to come down a bit more. So there you go. To find out what's coming up next, make sure to subscribe. I will be putting links in the description below the video for past stock predictions that have been done. Please leave your comments. Please subscribe. Please like up this video. And thank you for tuning in.